Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation on the logarithmic scales of pleasure and pain. Uh, before I proceed, I do want to say that um, it's important to be in a emotionally stable and, yeah, generally speaking, have a, some slack in order to uh, watch this presentation and contemplate these topics, because I'm going to be talking about some emotionally difficult uh, subject matters. Um, that said, I am very, very happy to be able to talk about these um, in this context because I think if we generally want to do the most good that we can, recognizing uh, just how bad pain can be, it's really, uh, you know, ethically necessary to make informed decisions about priorities. So briefly speaking, the outline of this talk is going to be five, you know, sections, basically a section about intuition pump, uh, kind of like giving you this, you know, an intuitive feel for like what I'm talking about. Second, uh, broadly discussion about like long tails and why they matter, uh, why they are like so important for effective altruism. Then I'll, I'll be giving some uh, examples of extremes of pleasure and pain to kind of ground it in, you know, the real world. And uh, also some analyses of a survey that we conducted that uh, suggests uh, logarithmic scales for pleasure and pain. And finally, a brief discussion on the implications of this knowledge and basically how does it change our priorities so yeah i mean first of all you know kind of this pretty well known i think like comic from xkcd a guy comes to you know an emergency department saying his arm hurts and they ask him okay from one to ten where ten is the worst conceivable pain you know just how how much in pain are you and he responds uh you know one and the truth is that if we could truly in a sense internalize and, and really know just how bad pain can be most of the things that afflict us would probably be a one out of ten um, at most, and you know that's uh, <laughs> even even things that are like pretty uncomfortable relative to to what's out there. Um, okay, so like here's like an intuition pump. So would you rather experience one out of ten pain for ten minutes, or experience ten out of ten pain for one minute? You know, and here, like, we might use kind of a clinical definition for, for these uh, numbers. For example, one out of 10 pain is often defined as very light, barely noticeable pain, occasional twinges, uh, no medication is needed. Whereas uh, 10 out of 10 pain is defined as, you know, unable to speak, you know, crying or moaning uncontrollably, near delirium, you know, you know, the strongest, you know, pain relievers only partially effective. And uh, actually here, I, I lied to you because this is not even a description for 10 out of 10 pain. That's a description for 9 out of 10 pain. So it actually gets worse than that. Um, okay, so moving on, another intuition pump. Would you rather experience 1 out of 10 pain in 10 parts of your body or experience 10 out of 10 pain in one part of your body? I mean, and I know like there's a lot of caveats here, such as, you know, the homunculi is not, you know, uniformly distributed and whatnot. But I think like we can formalize this question and, and ask in a very rigorous way. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe to ground it, it's kind of the difference between uh, a sunburn, a mild sunburn in all of your body, as opposed to, you know, your, your hand literally, you know, on fire with a gasoline for like 10 minutes, you know, which one would you prefer? And uh, finally, you know, assume you have 2 out of 10 pain in your leg due to a cramp and a 7 out of 10 pain uh, due to a migraine in your head. Now, would you rather have your leg cramp uh, go from 2 out of 10 to 3 out of 10 or your migraine go from 7 out of 10 to 8 out of 10? And, uh, you know, interestingly, in all of these cases, you know, the, the general public, uh, at least, you know, very informal, unscientific, but uh, some surveys here. Um, yeah, most people choose, you know, lower amounts of pain over perhaps a little bit more more time or more area. And um, interestingly, you know, like a, a naive utilitarian uh, view would say that these, you know, options are perfectly equivalent because if you all that matters is kind of the average pain over time and the average pain is the same. Of course, with a huge caveat that that would be assuming that the pain scale is linear in nature and if it's not linear in nature and you know you do a utilitarian intervention to minimize average pain quote unquote you may be you know finding interventions that perhaps help a lot of people a little bit and you know that has a big impact on the average but you may be leaving by the wayside uh, people who are like in really 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 bad situations 
And that's uh, that's something that I think is really important to understand. <laughs> that we, we, you know, just average, changing the average is actually not necessarily actually minimizing something like phenomenal suffering. Now, why would the scales be logarithmic? And, and here's just a, a very simple reasoning, and that is that for you to detect a difference in intensity of two experiences, they have to be different uh, by a certain percentage, by a certain proportion. That once, you know, you're in a lot of pain or a lot of pleasure, or, you know, something is very intense in your experience, small differences are of, in absolute value, or like even large differences in absolute value are very hard to tell apart. Um, because you can only definitively say, oh, the pain got worse when there's kind of a proportion increase. And if you follow this to its ultimate implications, it actually means, you know, that how people report pain, uh, assuming they, they're reporting kind of like sequences of just noticeable differences, will be in terms of a logarithmic scale. And uh, here's kind of, you know, to ground these uh, very clearly, this is very well known in, in psychophysics, that if you show people kind of like two pictures with different numbers of dots in it, that you need to change the, the number of dots uh, by a certain percentage for you to notice a difference between them. It's not about the absolute value. It's about the percentage difference. And, you know, perhaps at the very beginning, you may think, well, you know, there's not that many dots in here. You know, how bad could it be <laughs> if you just extend the scale? But as some of you almost certainly know, you know, exponentials grow really quickly. And by the, you know, the time you get to, to the 10th uh, grade <laughs> in, the, in the pain scale, you're talking about a lot, a lot, a lot of pain. And uh, here the analogy could be like, you know, each of these dots is a pinprick that sure at the you know lower ends of the scale is not very much but as you go up they start to become a whole lot of them now okay so why would long tail uh distributions matter and overall i'm just gonna say that i think that the observation that a lot of uh the effectiveness of charities follows a long tail distribution is a cornerstone of effective altruism it is really kind of what gives it it's juice, you know, it's what allows a smart and, and uh, clever people who want to do as much, much good in, in the world as possible to actually be able to find, you know, interventions that have like an, a massive outsized uh, level of impact in, in, in a good way. And this shows up in, in all sorts of ways. You know, if you rank charities by the number of quality adjusted life years per dollars, <laughs> you know, you will have like this very crazy long tail that, you know, the top 1% of charities is a thousand times more cost effective than the median charity and you know this has been done for a number of different metrics such as the ones in in this slide but the one that it hasn't been done for is the intensity of suffering in particular conditions in particular people and you know just to ground it in a super concrete quantitative example we last year with the help of another ea we conducted a survey of basically quantifying the number of uh, cluster headaches which is one of the most painful conditions that there are uh, that people ha have every year. And if you ask, you know, sufferers of cluster headaches uh, that question, the results that you get is this extremely skewed long tail distribution. Um, and it's like even more skewed than like the classic Pareto distribution. We're talking about like, it's not even like 80% of cases is in the top 20% 20, 20 of, of people who suffer more. If we're talking about something like, you know, 90% of cases is in the top 10% of, of the people who suffer the most. So it's like, you know, ex extremely skewed. Now, why would this appear in the wild? But, you know, there's a whole lot of phenomena in, in, in the world that follow long tail distributions. As an example, you have like avalanches. And really, the way I reason about it is kind of these uh, overlapping risk factors. You know, in, in the case of an avalanche is things such as the number of mountains and the height of the mountains in your, in your country and your latitude, you know, and, and things like that, that when you have enough of these overlapping risk factors, you know, each factor is contributing the probability of, of the event by a certain percentage. So when you have a bunch of them, you actually have like exponentially higher, you know, uh, instances and intensity of the phenomena. And this translates pretty well in the case of nervous systems as well, where like basically the, the, the conditions are things such as, you know, the probability of a certain physiological state plus the state of your nervous system and environmental triggers such that, yeah, like some people end up having, you know, exponentially more instances and intensity of different types of suffering. Um, now, uh, we went into this research with kind of this idea of like, 
you know, verifying predictions of, you know, what would be, what would do we expect to see in a world that actually has a log normal distribution for pain and pleasure, you know, and, and we came up with things such as, you know, the existence of extremes, um, uh, skewed ratios, that is to say, like, if you ask a person, how much worse was your most painful experience as opposed to the second worst that you should actually see, like, you know, that, that it would be like worse by perhaps like a, a, an integer number of times as opposed to just like a small fraction. Uh, you would also have like appearance of long tails in, for example, the number of times that a particular disease gets uh, um, mentioned as some of the, the top causes for, for pain. Uh, and also like deference transitivity, which uh, I'm not going to get into due to a lack of time. I will mention, though, that this is definitely also the case with pleasure. And for you to look into into your own time, there is, you know, Janus, uh, these Buddhist uh, concentration, meditation, uh, temporal lobe seizures. And if you get a good trip, uh, 5-MeO, DMT, perhaps the most powerful psychedelic, they all produce, you know, states of well-being that are like orders and orders of magnitude higher than what most people conceive is even possible. Um, yeah, it's here, feel free to pause and, uh, and read these quotes uh, for later. Um, but yeah, in terms of the pain scales, I mean, something, uh, yeah, definitely that happens across the board is for various different types of pain, people who are very acquainted with them, who come up with scales, basically admit that the scales are logarithmic in nature. You know, you have, for example, the, the pain scale of uh, uh, stings uh, of insects, which explicitly, you know, it said that each, gradi each number basically means 10 times more painful than the previous one. And you end up having, you know, these like extraordinarily bizarre statistics than like, you know, like a bullet ant, uh, the sting of a bullet ant is a thousand times more painful than, than a, the, the sting of a bee, you know, insane, insane. But uh, apparently it's, it's the case. Um, then you also have, uh, you know, the pain of different hot sauces that, you know, in the upper ranges is actually, actually really bad, <laughs> uh, exponentially so. And definitely cluster headaches. I mean, the, the keep scale is kind of the standard scale for assessing the intensity of uh, cluster headaches, uh, how bad they are. And, you know, the, the person who came up with this scale basically yeah, admitted that, you know, a keep of 10 is not just twice as bad as a keep of 5, it's 10 times worse. And already, you know, like the, the lowest grade cluster headache is already really, really, really bad. So this is, this is quite terrible. Um, also here, I mean, just to kind of ground this, like the phenomenology of cluster headaches, um, you know, we interviewed several people for, for this research. And, and one of them, for example, said that, you know, the, the pain does not fit a zero to 10 scale. You know, a cluster headache is at least 10 times worse than a 10, other types of 10 out of 10 pain, like childbirth and things like that. Um, you know, and also, you know, this is the stuff of, of nightmares, you know, re really, really terrible things that, you know, when you experience a really bad cluster headache, the, the pain ends up being not only physiological, but also spiritual, that basically you feel betrayed by all, all of reality. You feel there's just no goodness. Um, uh, it, it, the pain seems to have transcended every last barrier. You feel uh, spiritually violated. You know, they say things such as this broke my will, this killed me on some level. You know, things that are really, really, really nasty. And that, yeah, uh, hopefully this causes in you uh, an urge to try to help these people. Um, and yeah, I mean, some further analysis that we conducted on kind of the uh, people ranking and rating and, and comparing some of the, the worst and best experiences in their life. We did some like latent trait analyses uh, and that showed that, yeah, definitely the latent traits were much better fitted to a log normal distribution as opposed to a, a normal distribution. Um, and this is both true in, in pleasure and pain. And uh, yeah, if I were to show you kind of a, a revised kind of visualization of pleasure and pain scales, it would you know look like this, which is that the amount of like positive feelings, positive qualia, that you experience as you, you know, ascend up the ladder of, of, uh, of the pleasure scale, you know, grows exponentially. Um, it's not just like, you know, linearly more positive feelings. There's kind of these explosions of love at the, at the upper levels. And likewise for, for pain, you know, cluster headaches is like orders of magnitude bigger than what you might expect. And this is, uh, yeah, pleasure and pain just side by side. I'll quickly mention, you know, some key pleasures that arose in our research, you know, birth of children, uh, you know, falling in love, MDMA. Uh, some of the key pains are things such as kidney stones and migraines and childbirth, uh, death of father and mother. Um, and uh, the crazy thing is that a lot of these disorders are actually very tractable and possible to treat. You know, the case of cluster headaches is the lack of access to, for example, substances like DMT and LSD and, and magic mushrooms that is 
you know they, they are the most effective treatment against these these problems so it's yeah it's insane it's a, it's a just like matter of uh policy and and advocacy and technical talent focusing on this and, and we just don't have it and i think it's uh, urgently needed and uh with that yeah basically just uh, thank you and a call to arms let's destroy hell <laughs>